Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Kirk here with Kirk Giordano Plastering, my son Jason on the camera. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to show you prep work on a house we are about to color coat. Now, the fella called me. I come. I looked at it last week, and we're going to do it today. So, what we are going to do with this home, and by the way, this home was uh, lathed and plastered a year ago by another fella, and Anyway, things didn't work out. Sometimes they don't. We're here to apply the color finish. I'll tell you what I was telling this fella because we are applying a color coat maintenance free integrated finish. It's a mouthful. All that means is instead of painting, which is thin like paper, he chose to put on a color coat. So the color coat's like a brick. If you wet a brick, it'll darken. That means that bricks, the colors last forever. So what we are going to apply is 50 times thicker than any paint. And it's porous, but it's also maintenance free, which means it'll last forever. 100 years, you will never have to paint that wall again. Uh, some of the things I was noticing when I got here, uh, just uh, a couple days ago, I looked at it and I, I looked at the front of the house and then I, we walked all the way around and I thought, hmm, I thought, well, gee, I said, these guys did a really good job, first of all, a really good job. They used uh, reinforced fibered mesh. You see all these little fibers, well, maybe the camera won't see it, but all these little fibers here, there's a whole bunch uh, around everywhere. So they used a good product and it had fiberglass. Uh, with it or they put it in manually. So what I see here, I mean, as long as I've been doing this, guys, a um, long time, uh, what I saw here is, okay, sure, I can give you a cost to do a color code maintenance free finish. However, there are certain things that I must do prior. I said, first of all, you've got an underground stream. <laughs> he says, Kirk, how'd you know that? I said, well, this is the east. The sunrise is in the east right now. It's on us. Beautiful. It's on us. So you don't, guys, in our area in California, you don't get cracks this large. See, they're, they're everywhere. They're horizontal. Generally, you'll get the cracks going this way. One here and one there at an angle. One. But to have massive ones that you can stick a credit card into is telling me there's an underground stream. Why? Okay, an underground stream, it keeps the house wet underneath. And with the rain, the houses do lift. And then they, when the drier conditions occur, they settle. And you get this kind of cracking. Uh, that was my first thing. I said, I'll know for sure if I look at the other side. Now, the only time I see this kind of horizontal cracking, guys, is if, if it's a house in a really hot area. Like, say, they go to Arizona or someplace that's always hot. You'll see sometimes guys will, when they're doing the plywood, they butt the plywood together. <laughs> they butt the plywood together and then when the sun hits it and it bakes it for 110 degrees for 30, 40 days straight, what, the, what happens is that plywood expands and it pushes the stucco out and you get these kind of, but I know this area because uh, I'm, I'm 20 miles from this area in my own home. We don't get this kind of heat, so I just figure underground stream. By the way, guys, there's so many underground streams uh, where I live, thousands and thousands so I'm aware of this stuff anyway we've got some hairline hairline cracking that is substantial that just means hey that's big see this one here this is a hairline when it's like the hair on your head if you use a quality paint say like this one that's a hairline now if you use a quality paint like say you you say well gee man I'm gonna use a quality paint it better be thick like glue, like say Sherman Sherwin Williams makes a primer and paint. You pay a whopping ninety dollars a gallon, guys, for that stuff. But it floods these certain paints you buy won't flood it. It just means because it's like water. You put it on, it's just like water. It doesn't do diddly squat. So it helps if you're going to paint a house to go with a quality product. Okay, back to what I was going to explain. So I look at this and I told him, well, you know what I'd have to do, me. Uh, as as my style is I would have to put a poly bond on this crack I put a poly bond on it and what is poly poly bond is it's an adhesive cementitious material it's designed for attaching styrofoam so if you put the poly bond on here 
you and there's two kinds of poly bonds I might as well get this out right now there's fine sand and heavy sand now if I put polybond on here and I put fiberglass mesh tape on here and then I put another coat of polybond on that what does that do it it makes if you're looking at a wall that's chewing plum I've not done this uh, this is my first time doing it but I already told the fella I said they rotted that work this is a rod not a derby not a t-square it's a rod and you take a 10-foot rod and you, you 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 go over everything and you make everything chewing plum okay that being said there's a reason for that but getting back to this crack, I'll come back to the rod in a minute. Getting back to this crack, there's a way to fix it the right way, and there's about 20 different ways to do it the wrong way. A wrong way is you would put caulking in it and expect that it's done. And what happens if you just put caulking in there? Well, you color coat the house. And the next day, you see all the caulking. It goes through or bleeds through. Or worse yet, it rains. And when it rains, like a brick, it gets dark. A color coat, maintenance-free, integrated finish, will darken too, and you'll see this bright. And so every crack will be enhanced a hundred times. I can, I can spend the rest of the day talking about crack repair, but we're going to do this crack, and when I get to that stage, I'll show you guys the proper way to do cracks. If it's a base coat and you're going to apply a color coat, maintenance-free, cementitious finish, uh, it's a big difference between acrylics. We're not going into acry acrylics on this job. Acrylic, synthetic, same thing, it's stucco with water and sand and other things that make it an acrylic product. Uh, but we're not doing acrylic here, so I just thought I'd mention that in case somebody says, well, why don't you do an acrylic? They don't want an acrylic, guys. Okay, so uh, again, getting back to what I see here. These guys who did this job, they were pretty good. They, they were pretty good. They didn't have a great eye for detail. Like, I mean, many of the windows still have red tape on it. How long does red tape last, guys? If it's echo tape, that's, that stuff lasts about three months in the extreme heat. But I don't know what tape they used. Uh, we're going to retape everything. And we're, I got Madeline scraping all the windows, trying to do the best we can with what we have to work with. Okay, <laughs> going in a few directions here because I'm looking at a lot of things. And what I see, I, I say, man, these guys did a nice job. They rotted it. You don't have to rot a, a job, guys. I prefer to Darby it. But... In order for me to tell you how my prep work on this, I mean, I look at it immediately. I know how to, how to prep it properly for whatever finish we're going to apply. And again, guys, uh, I won't go into more finishes than the cementitious one. It's the La Habra cementitious finish. You got Western, La Habra, BMI, just to name a few. Okay, what these guys did here is they took this afloat. Now, they put the base coat on. After they scratch it, and then they put the base coat on. And then they... They, what they did was they compacted it. See this? This is compacted. And they left that compacted, but here they rotted it. And so you can rot a wall. I often do. You take it and you scrape the, the stucco off while it's still moist. That's, I mean, right after application, depending on the heat, it'll get moist. Uh, and then, or before it dries, you scrape it. Why? That's to make it trim plumb in every direction. We used to do that when... When I was working with big crews and they were going to put veneer brick on the outside of banks and we had to have two guys and we'd rot it so that the veneer brick would stick. Or you could do it on houses too. What did that create? <laughs> Most of the plasters are looking at this say, man, that's easy. I know what that created. That created a wall with different suctions. So I got my brother, Lou. He is around the back. And I told him, what I want you to do is apply a bonding agent over the entire home. So we're going to put a bonding agent over the entire home. Why? I'm not worried about our new cementitious finish adhering. I need to get the suction correct. The suction is what will create ghosting if you don't do that. Say so on average, I would wet this house the day before. Wet it, saturate it, let it absorb in. Then come the next day, mist it again, and look for my hollow spots like what's dry, what's still dripping, and get the wall uniform with water. However because of uh, so much the difference between rotting and hard rubber it's created this you see oh, well here's another example you can see all the the variations okay you see all those color variations and that's just raw cement raw cement should not have color variations never ever ever so if i were to put any color on here when it dried those color variations would be enhanced tenfold they'd just be enhanced 
It doesn't matter which cementitious color code I use. It would be just like this, but enhanced only in color. And the fellow would look or the homeowners would say, Kirk, that sucks. <laughs> Redo it. So I have to. I have to know all of these things before I bid a job. So what we're going to do, what my brother Lou is doing, he is putting a bonding agent on. Again, I'll discuss that later, but I want this suction the same as this suction. And we still got to do all the crack. We got to do a lot of things here. I'll, um, that being said, I'll, I'll walk you around and show you what, what we have to work with. And when we do the color code, I'll just show you one wall, guys, like say this wall here. I'll show you how we do uh, a color finish when we get to that stage. And you can see right here, this is as far as Lou's got with that bonding agent. See that? You see the blue? The blue. Uh, that's, that's a bonding agent I like. That's one coat. Then later, I'm going to put another coat over this right here. Maybe two or three. The idea is I have got to get the wall. It's got to be the same suction. If it's not the same suction, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be ghostly. Uh, it'll, it'll be ghosting and bleeding through and the fellows will say, man, what kind of crap is that? <laughs> I don't want to see all those variations. Anyway, moving on. Hello, baby. Uh, Madeline covering all these windows. It's a hot day. So, and again, we, we still have this, uh, these massive cracks here. They're everywhere. It's uh, a bit, a bit, it's a lot, but it happens. It's, it's not a huge deal. We're going to, uh, I'll show you how we, how I do this on just one wall, guys. Okay, over here. Uh, you know, finally, again, could they have taken the tape off? Uh, they should have, because some tapes leave a nasty residue. We, we spent an hour cleaning windows already. And, and stuff like that. There's only, there's certain things you should and shouldn't do. Um, you know, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and tell the fellow, well, gee whiz, do this and do that. All we're here to do is to correct it as best we can. Uh, things like this. <laughs> hey, who got carried away with caulking? <laughs> we're going to fix that. But um, it's certain things like that. My job is to look at what they did, and I see a really nice job. However, some folks, they didn't know the intricacies of of a color coat. Uh, they did a great job as far as applications. A little sloppy at the very tops, but a lot of guys are sloppy at the tops because they think nobody's watching. With me, I have my whole family here, so we're all working together. We're, we have a, we work in harmony. I don't have to tell anybody what to do. They all know what to do. So I'll tell you what some of the materials we use, guys. We're, we're going to be using a fiberglass mesh tape over some of these um, horizontal cracks because they're pretty substantial. You know the difference between white and yellow fiber mesh tape? <laughs> Anybody know? Anybody care? There's no difference. It's just color. <laughs> the same stuff. Uh, of course, we need a lot of tape for what we're doing. Um, Wellcrete. Why do I choose Wellcrete all the time? You guys might have seen it and said, Kirk, how come you always use Wellcrete? Well, Wellcrete has been... Uh, Sold at the plaster material yard since I've been going to that like 40 years ago. Um, this has the most, um, uh, what's that glue, Jay? Polymers. <laughs> polymers, okay. It has the most polymers in here, which means it's a really effective bonding agent. And it's a, if it's a really good effective bonding agent, we're not using it for a bonding agent. We're using it to kill the suction. It does both. So... Um, and besides, the house set for a year, it's a good idea. I told them, hose it all off, get all the dust and crap germ all, uh, off that. Say if you're mowing a lawn, the dust goes on the wall. So he did that. And we're putting this on. So the bonding agent wasn't why I purchased this stuff. Uh, I purchased it because I want the best bonding agent because it'll seal it. I need suction correct on this. And of course, you know, you're sheathing. Uh, I always tell people, what's the most important thing? And these little dollar brushes, I love these little dollar brushes, man. They work so well. But that is the most important thing on a job. You got to have some music, guys. Play some music and play it loud and have some fun. What's that saying? If you love what you do, you'll never work another day in your life. And we kind of like what we do. So uh, we're good. We're about to get started. And... On, a, on another note, guys, if you're a painter or you're applying any bonding agent, get the fattest 
nap roll you can find, this is inch and a half, because this will apply, like it'll do a whole section where something like this, this little nasty one eighth inch nap, it's useless. You put it in once, you get a two, a two inch stroke rather than a 15 foot stroke. So buy the fat, fat naps, guys. Anyway, we're gonna get started. Here's a, here's a good way to do this if you're gonna apply a cementitious finish, guys. Okay, you find the crack. Now there is, zero in on that crack. See, that's a substantial crack. Do you gotta hit every crack on a house? No, no, in fact, we don't. It, I, I hit just the ones uh, sometimes above and below a door. Sometimes, if they're substantial. But as a rule, I don't, because that's why we allow it to cure. When you allow something to cure, then it, as the pH level drops, I'll get boring for a minute, guys, the pH level drops, it, it cures. It goes from uh, about a 12, and then it drops down to about a 10, uh, an 8 or a 10, and that's when you know the, the stucco is cured enough for, say, painting or a color coat. Uh, doesn't matter if it's an acrylic, doesn't matter if it's cementitious, you should allow that to set. Anyhow, um, I'm putting this mesh tape on right now, and that's all you have to do, guys. And for anybody who thinks, well, gee, <laughs> can you? And I've, I've done mesh tape this, this wide on ceilings, interior, and I've only done one house like that because nobody wants to pay for that kind of stuff. But can you put mesh over the entire house? Sure you can. Does anybody say on, for example, I don't know what they paid to have all this done, but if we were thinking about increments of 10, say they paid, I'm gonna go overboard just to prove a point. Say they paid $40,000 to have the scratch, the last scratch, brown, and color. 10, 10, 10, and 10, 40,000. 40, uh, we generally go 40, 20, 20, because lath is a lot of work. But if you take that example, and you did the last scratch and brown, and then after the brown, you, you put mesh like what we're doing over the whole house. That'd be actually another 10. And if I told somebody that, hey, uh, I'm gonna charge you 10 to mesh it, <laughs> they'd call the cops on me and have me arrested. I'd be like, are you kidding me, Kirk? Uh, they don't do that here where I'm from. I've, I've done it once, but that was a special circumstance. Anyhow, here's what you do, guys. And I'm using, um, polybond because it's cementitious and it's an adhesive. Uh, can you use, say, like um, La Habra? Sure you can. It's, it's a color coat material. Now, there's, there's about 20 different uh, color coat material finish, finish bags. And, and from La Habra, Western, BMI, Carson's, all these are just the tip of the iceberg of those, what you can use. You can use that stuff, but see, those don't have um, the bonding agent. So anyway, this, this stuff here, I'll show you a bag in a bit, guys, because uh, this particular product, you can't buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or any of those. It's only sold at the material yards, like, like the plastic, like say Westside or Cowply. <laughs> By the way, uh, we did have to go to Calply today, and when I called them, I asked, are you guys open for business during this uh, pandemic? And they said, yeah, Kirk, we're open for business, but you have to wear a mask um, inside the office, or, or we have to give it to you outside the office, similar to what we had to do today. So, I didn't think I was going to use so much Wellcrete. I sent Madeline over there because we're in... Contra Costa, and it was closer to us than West Side. I called down there, my buddy Joe. He says, "Yeah, yeah, send Madeline down, and what we'll do is we'll meet her at the door uh, because we can't we can't talk to you. So this was we got to wear these two. But anyhow, um, back to this. Um, we went through a lot of Wellcrete. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about." Calply. I, I have to let this set for a minute. This will set for a minute and then what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll trim it. I'll trim it out kind of like that because the finish we're going to apply is 
it's going to be um, a skip trial, which hides a lot of stuff. But as I was saying when I first started this, what happens is if this is a big hump, then if you apply, say, a sand finish, you can look at it sometimes in the light and say, why is there a little hump there? So the polybond has got to have the finest sand possible because if it has coarse sand, then it would create a bit of a bow. And yeah, you, feather, you could feather it in by going further, but it's like when, when is enough? Okay, guys, we're going to show you now. Now that we have a bonding agent, this is this color here, Southern Moss. We're hustling today, so we'll show you how to apply the texture at the end. But right now, you look at this wall. You say, wow, that's a blue wall. It is mighty blue. But it's still, what we applied is a bonding agent. It is not a sealer. So these walls still, it's like 95 today. That's a hot day. So even though we are working with walls that are, we killed some of the suction, we didn't kill enough, guys, because we've already done a lot of this house, and so we have got to wet it. And so what I'm doing is I'm wetting it. I'm hydrating it so that the heat, it's about 100 now, like 90 to 100. So the heat is coming around. The sun is right above me. In 10 minutes, it's going to be on this wall, and we're going to be hustling. So I'm going to take you around. Um, we're going to do something similar to that texture there, but um, uh, not quite like that. Um, that is uh, a skip trial, and they knocked it down some places, and some places they didn't knock it down. Why? Uh, they screwed up. Anyway, uh, what we got here, I want to show you. What is a color coat? Integrated maintenance free finish, you can see. Okay, now you see this wall here. This wall is drying still because we just applied this. Jason did the texture. I spread. Jason did the texture. So this texture, what we do, we, we spread the color. I'll show you this toward the end of the video. We spread the color. Then Jason floated everything. He brought the aggregate out. And so now we have the sand right here. And then we textured that. Now, if you look at this texture right here, they want to skip trial. This is called a Spanish lace skip trial, and it's uh, pretty nice. <laughs> we did it. We're going to show you another um, texture over here, too. And by the way, guys, uh, I had people call me. They say, hey, Kirk, I hired some contractor. And every time it rains, my house darkens. What did he do wrong? <laughs> he didn't do nothing wrong. He did everything right because this is drying right now. A maintenance-free color coat integrated finish is like this over here, guys. Okay, you see that brick? That brick, when it gets wet, it darkens. And that brick will retain its color for a thousand years, guys. This, uh, I, I hit it with water just to show how it goes dark. So if you guys ever buy a house and it darkens when the winter comes, that means it's maintenance free. You'll never have to paint the body of that house. It's 50 times thicker than paint and lasts forever. I mean, we're talking... Uh, hundreds of years. If you get tired of just because the sun yellows it a little bit or bleaches it, uh, forget about it. Leave it alone because that's how they are in the UK. They actually like that aged look. It's, it enhances the beauty or appearance of it. Uh, over here, uh, Jay and I finished this wall. Now, if you notice the texture again, the texture is we applied it, floated it, and textured it. That's how we do things. Uh, I don't know if, if you can uh, take a picture of that or show it. Uh, maybe if I grab a ladder, you could. Um, you want to you wanna try. Because the fellow here said, you know, if you can give me this, I'm good. And actually what he's showing is a texture that is, uh, it's applied, it's applied wet. And it's troweled wet. And it, therefore, it's not as pretty as this. This is a pretty texture, guys. Yeah, yeah, we did it. It's not bragging. It's just what it is. Now, that one there, you apply it. And while it's still wet, you trowel it. You save a lot of material when you do that. You save a lot of time. But we're not trying to save time, guys. We are explaining things as we go. And we're teaching. And we're showing how to do things a better way, a different way. Uh, some might say, not better, but it's, it's our way, and it's prettier. 
So we're going to get back to doing that uh, gable there because it's going to be in the sun in a minute. And right now, I'll tell you, it's about 100 in the sun. I was sweating my arse off here. And I will be again when the sun comes up. So we're going to leave it alone. And when we get to the very front of the house, we'll show you how what we're talking about. How we're applying it, how we're floating it, and how we texture it. But not now because we're running. All right, guys. I'll tell you, it's toward the end of the day. It's getting late. But I'll show you how we apply this stuff. Uh, we get good exercise doing this. I'm looking at people riding bikes and walking by here because we're right next to a park. Everybody's got a mask on. Uh, coronavirus. Anyhow, where would you guys start this? A homeowner. If you're a homeowner, you say, well, I'm going to do like Kirk or like anybody. Where would you start? I know where I'm going to start. The only place I can. It makes the most sense. If I start from the top, work my way down. I'm going to have a joint there and a joint here. Discoloration. It'll ghost. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here. I'm going to come up. Go through the obstacle of Madeline, come up here, come up here, no joints, and then boom, come down there. Uh, by the way, baby, you want to uh, move that radio? Um, that's the most important tool on the job, guys, the job site radio. And what I do is, I've been wetting this, and so I wet this garage door. Why? So that the stucco I drop won't adhere to it. And I have misted the wall. I've been doing this for about a half hour. Miss, 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 miss. Why? Because it's, a, we are in a hot, hot area, guys. Uh, really hot. So, here's what we do now. Uh, I'm going to use my handy dandy trowel here. <laughs> if, if you're watching, you say, that's not a trowel, that's a toy. I'm using this trowel here. Uh, I ain't got time to play around. It's getting late. There's where that little bitty guy goes. All I need to do this is this Congo trowel and a margin trowel. That's only for the very corners. All right, so since Madeline jumped off of here, um, I'm going to get started. Now, I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. Oh, man, that's some stiff mud. Uh, oh, well, I'm going to make it work. That's what happened, guys. You want your mud. You want your mud a lot thinner than this. You want it like uh, whipping cream. This is like concrete. Anyway, so I got to start at the bottom and work my way up so no joints. So uh, what I'll do with this stiff mud here is start from the bottom. I'm working my way up. All right. Uh, and by the way, you guys might have noticed you say, wow, that's a green. It is southern moss. Southern moss is a really cool color. It goes with everything. So, let me get through this obstacle course. Oh, come on now. All right. And notice too, guys. When you're plastering, go up, go down on it. Baby, give me some mud, uh, just a little bit. Oh, there you go. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Now, when I go to texture, I'll show you something different, a different technique. But for right now, it's just getting it on here because I'm just going to get this on. And after I get it on, then I'm going to float it. Why? Uh, because I told you earlier that what that does is it gives it a, a, a really cool finish. It's called a, a sand finish first. All right, cut that, pull it here while I'm under here. I'll get it right where that elbow is. And remember, I wet this door for a reason. I wet that door because I don't want to cover it. And this isn't going to damage it. A little bit of stucco on it is not going to damage it. Not for the amount of time it's going to take me to apply this. This is uh, nothing to this. Okay. And I'll show you how to you get your, your weep screed, the bottom here. 
with a float. So I'm getting ready to get up there with Madeline and she's going to hock it to me. What is hocking it to me? She's going to hand it to me. Coming up, baby. All right. And yeah, we're at a slant. This, this wall is curving down. So if you're at a slant, you better have a plank under one leg. A little bit of mud, baby. Beautiful. All right. Now, you see how this wall here, they really screwed up. The, this one's floated. This one's uh, rotted. A big screw up by the previous fellas. But that's why we're here. We're here to correct that kind of stuff. Okay. A little bit of stretching, a little bit of elbow grease. Nothing we can't handle. And here's, because I'm using a trowel that uh, is not a complete radius. Everybody says, oh, it's a complete radius. It's not a complete radius. Just the ends are arced. Then it's straight here. So, and what I'm doing is I put it on and come back over it. You put it on, you come back over it. That fills it well and makes certain that there's no hairline checking. If you just put it on and leave it, uh-uh. Put it on and go back over it. A little bit more, sweetie. And Madeline can do this too, so could Jay. And they have been doing the most of it. Put it on, come back. Put it on, come back. And where, where I got the elbow. By the way, guys, how many of you know that if I don't have no, if I don't have anything on the ground here, this elbow will support the whole scalpel. It doesn't have to be. The front legs can be in midair. The elbow supports it. And because the last guys, this is a piece of metal, covered it, this coat will stick to it because it's already had a chance to dry. So I'm going to leave it right at that. And I'm leaving some excess fat right here. Or I can do one of these numbers. Hold on, baby. Don't try this, guys. If you fall, you'll say, well, well, cr well crap, I seen Kirk do it. All right, now to the top. You're gonna put it here, top, pull it down. Pull it down, pull it down. Thank you, baby. And again, this, this is the same application is for, if we were gonna do, say, um, an acrylic finish, same, same exact way. If we're gonna do, this is a cementitious finish, meaning when it gets wet, yes, it darkens. Well, heck, I might as well sit down. Uh, so this will darken when wet, but that's good. Because if it darkens when it's wet, that means like a brick. It is maintenance free. Anytime I can sit down, I'm sitting down. Uh, you guys do something like this. Make sure you get somebody to mix for you. Because again, I... Um, on the, on the, uh, it looks like it's in. Thank you. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, but it's got a red light on. The red light's supposed to be on. What about? Oh, okay, yeah. We're good? Yeah. Cobain's. All right, here we go. So, because I'm already here. Uh, baby, you want to hand me that? Oh, I see it. Okay, no, I got it. Hold that for a second, please. All right. And this is just to keep that garage door clean because Sucko won't adhere to it unless it's on there for all day. If it's on for all day, yeah, it will. But we're not gonna do that all day stuff. In fact, it'd take me about 10 minutes to hit all of this. Okay, beautiful. Let me get up now too. Ah, okay. So, what I like to do, guys, is 
and put it on here and drop it a couple times. If you drop it a couple times, that mixes it because this mud is stiff. Okay, so we're back to it. We're gonna put it here and then turn it. Boom. That gets the top. Yeah, I've been wetting this wall down for about a half hour. That tells you how hot it is today. I wet it down half hour and I wet it down earlier and it is still hot. And that's with it being somewhat sealed. That just goes to show you how hot it is, guys. It is no joke. Fortunately, I love the heat. Here we go. We do the top. I see all these nails. I'm, there's a whole bunch of nails. What I'm doing is the blade is so thin, I'm going right under them. I'll tell you another technique too. And guys who are always doing brick walls, and uh, if you're doing a brick wall, or say you're doing cinder block, oh man, I get asked this like five times a week. I say, Kirk, I already started. Now it's sucking up so fast. What do I do? You do the same thing I'm going to do right now. Okay. It's sucking up so fast. Hit it again. Just miss, 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 miss. Right above you, baby. Okay, I got to, I'm going to go right by you, baby. Yike. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a hot, hot day. Oh, I'll tell you the city. You say, wow, that's a hot area. It's, it's really hot. You can tell how hot it is by just this mud. Look at that big clump. Oh, that's stiff, hot mud. And by the way, when I say hot mud, I don't mean like hot mud like in all the rest of the videos we got. This does not have an accelerator. There is no finished material with an accelerator in it. Uh, there's every base coat, every interior, you can put an accelerator in it. But there's no such thing as accelerators for finished coats. Another one, baby. Thank you, sweetie. Uh, okay. One more, baby. Beautiful. Okay, then we're getting the top. I got a lot of fat up here. I'm robbing Peter, paying Paul. I'm not sure what that expression means, but you take some of it off here and you put it on. I, I got a lot of fat here. Okay. And where I can't reach, I generally stand on an empty bucket. But if I do that on film, and then you guys do it, and you fall and crack your head open. You'll say, I was watching Kirk do it. Uh, so, don't do that kind of stuff. All right, a little bit more. Here's what I can do. Don't, don't even show what I'm doing, Jay. Uh-huh. I'm just getting it done, guys. You guys set your scaffold. Make sure your scaffold is set properly and finish what you're doing. I can use the, the tip of this because this is a Congo child. You got what, babe? Now this child is 20 inches long. 20 inches long is less strokes, I can get more done. Kind of like my brother Lou. He'd always say, man, I'm putting 200 pounds in a hod. A hod is something you carry mud up with. And I say, why don't you put less? He goes, that means I got to make more trips. So I get that, I get that, and that. And actually, I could float that in, but if you guys are doing it, you say, hey, how do I do it? Get yourself one of these long uh, margin trials. It's a margin trial. They got pointer trials, margin trials. The pointers actually have a point. Uh, and you can get for those gables, but I can do that with when I get ready to, um, hey, look at that, a pointer trial. 
So we get it right in there, blam. Get that right in there, blam. Okay, do I need this again? No. Uh, I'm gonna hit this real quick, baby, and then I'm gonna wet that again. Okay. Come on now, come on. We've been doing this all day, guys. Love it. You know that saying. If you love what you do, you never work another day in your life. What, baby? Oh, we got some good mud. How about that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is good mud, guys. See the difference? It's soft, so I'll have to put as much muscle in it. If I could save that muscle, I want to save it because uh, I don't want to burn out. Uh, we've been doing this uh, for a long time today already. The last thing I want to do is burn out. Okay, so we're coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. And you guys, look, you have to look at it. Just go over it. And I'm turning the trial this way on edge and coming back on edge. Just do that a few times, guys. Get it on there, get rid of all the holidays. You get rid of all the holidays, you're doing good. Because see, a holiday right there. We don't want holidays. Uh, one second, sweetie, because, okay. Back, and I'm gonna wet in front of me because I'm going over here, and this over here, I, don't, I gotta keep it wet. Got to keep it wet. All right, by you, Jay. Beautiful. Okay. So, um, one more, sweetie. Yeah, man. Okay. Beautiful. A little more, baby. And then you can switch sides with me because I'm going to get over there. Yike. Okay. So, This is more of the same, guys. And it's going to take me like five more minutes to finish this wall. And you know what happens if you watch me for five more minutes? I'll start rambling on about a whole bunch of useless stuff that don't amount to nothing. So if you already got the point, you can click off. But anyway, I'm, I'm moving on again. Back and forth, back and forth. you got to cover the holidays. The holidays, what's that mean? And that's, that's actually paint for talk. That means that you've got holes here and there. So you got to cover all the holes. Otherwise, we texture this and you say, hey, I still see cement underneath. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. One more, sweetie. Okay. So, uh, baby, if you want to take that hose and, and get your area. And what I like to do, again, is go up come down and if you're looking if you want to do this quick and when I say quick I don't mean sloppy but just quick get yourself a big trowel uh, you know we're Amazon we're linked to Amazon and every tool we have Jason meticulously found it on Amazon and posted it and yeah we're members and we get 1% of all sales uh, helps us making these videos uh, but anyway, this particular trowel is hard to find uh, because people say, oh, it's a swimming pool trowel. Kind of, sort of, guys. Kind of, sort of. Uh, again, I, I already crossed that bridge with the arc in this. Okay. Woo, it's hot. I was doing a, some work around the corner and uh, there's a vent up there. I hit that vent, I swear I felt like sticking my head in the oven. I was thinking, wow, that's like 400 degrees. It just made the sweat pour right out of me. Personally, I can do this all day because it's good exercise. All right, I've almost got this done. Well, I'm coming up here, and I'm going to float this now. Why? Do I have to float it? 
No, it does. Maybe one out of ten people float it on that one. <laughs> and there's a reason for it. Uh, some of the textures I like, you float it first. If you float it just brings, bring it out the aggregate. What I do is, uh, yeah, baby. And if you could throw me up the float. All right, and so I'm going to float this now. Floating is, uh, um, I like floating myself, guys, because it, it makes it prettier. And also, if I've missed any area, it will catch it. As this sponge float, too, is designed. What's that word, guys? What's a sponge float designed for? Anybody know? Anybody care? <laughs> it's designed to bring the sand out. Okay, sweetie. Now, you guys don't have to do this, but if I texture over this, it's just, it's just a normal place. But if I do this right here, okay, I'm cleaning the, I'm cleaning the uh, trim. I'll clean the whole trim. Jay went and uh, put a new card in the camera. And I'll just continue float because I'm on a time limit. This wall is sucking the moisture. It's sucking the moisture right out of this color finish. And when it does that, I won't be able to float it. And again, this color, pretty color, it's southern moss. I just think of that word and it reminds me of some place in Charleston. Have I ever been to Charleston? No. It just sounds like something. All right, so we're going to go under these nails. These nails will destroy a float. Come in here, boom, boom, boom. And I'm about to drop down here now. Okay, coming up. Don't do this at home, guys. Ah. Okay. All right, I got a little part right here because my child don't want to go there because it's got that radius. I wouldn't trade that radius for anything. That radius is, I love it. Great for swimming pools, great for interior, and even better for exteriors. I even made a video of showing why this is uh, such a spectacular trial and that it shows the um, the radius in great detail all right so all I got to do is just to finish this piece and then I'm gonna go up there and texture I would prefer some uh, superior mud better mud but is it absolutely necessary not really but I would like it so um, that's the beauty of this big trowel. The big trowel, you don't have to do a whole lot of useless strokes. I don't want a little bitty trowel. A little bitty one take forever. Okay. And again, we didn't do this base coat. Uh, the base coat was done about a year ago. But um, it has some issues. Nothing we can't handle. As a rule, if something's wrong, we just fix it. As a rule, if I'm using a really good material, I'll tell you guys what it is. If it's a horrible material, of course, I don't use it. But I have had the the learning experience of using crappy materials. Many years in the past. You don't save a nickel, guys. So, like if you're gonna paint something, you better pay for Sherman Williams at a whopping 90 bucks a gallon. Otherwise, you're gonna be repainting it in like eight, 10 years. Sherman Williams at least you get 15 years out of that stuff, even though it's expensive. Okay, so since we are done with with the skim, now I'm gonna texture it. Can I let this dry and come back and texture it? 
Absolutely. Should I allow it to dry and texture it? That depends. That depends, guys. Uh, that depends on what finish people want. If they said, Kirk, what I want is a finish that uh, has a, uh, a lot of depth, then we'll allow it to dry and you give it more depth. Okay, guys, let me show you something else, too. I got a little bit of mud in here. It's a little bit better. Now, maybe the camera, I want to, see, I normally will go like this a couple times, but what I'll do is I'll put it at an angle, too. You see, that's kind of at an angle from this point to this point. That way, you can see the trowel. The trowel is the same size. This is a 14-inch hawk. It's the biggest hawk they made. If they made a 30-inch, I'd be using a 30-inch hawk. This is the biggest trial they make. If they made one bigger for this, I'd be using it. But so I'll put it at an angle. That way, I, when I take it off, I can get more mud on it. If, if I'm taking it off this way, that works too. But I'm dropping it on the hawk. You drop, turn, twist, drop, turn, twist, drop, turn, twist. Or you can pull it off the top. Some guys say, you're not a real plaster because you can't pull it off the top. And I say, guys, this, there's nothing to pulling it off the top. Okay, now we got that settled. It's on right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm giving it a skip trial. So what I like to do is I like to reinforce the corner sometimes. If I go straight up, that's fine. I mean, okay, for example, if I go straight up, that's fine. I can do that. But sometimes I reinforce the corners and I'll put it like so because corners just they're galvanized and they're metal but they're not always super strong and of course when you are working in the hot sun like this or actually on a hot day the sun's not on us but it's still about if you see me sweating that means it's hot and so I'm sweating as fast as I put it on the walls absorbing and you can see already this lightning color that lightning means the moisture has been sucked out of the texture. In order for this texture to adhere, you've got to knock it down. And it all depends on the day, guys. If it was a cold day, I could leave it till the end of the whole wall, then knock everything down. Right now, I want the texture to adhere. So if you want the texture to adhere, what you've got to do is put it on and then trowel over it so that that texture does indeed adhere. Now, this is called staggering. <laughs> Not the kind of staggering you get when you're drinking, but this kind of staggering here, this just simply means, um, see, I, I started here, 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 here. That way when I go to uh, put my next finish on, you won't see that line or the pattern. So we stagger the mud. And when I come here, I'm just gonna pull it down. Put it on, pull it down, put it on, pull it down. Pull it on, pull it down. Okay, now that we got that, I don't need to stagger anymore because I got a perfect spot. There's only a little bit of mud left on here, but since I'm down here, I use it up. A lot of times, guys, if I have a little bit, I'll just put, I'll use the, the hawk to skim the blade. And because I want this piece of metal, this is a J trim right here. They put a piece of J trim uh, for whatever reason. So I want that J trim covered too because it will, nobody wants to see a piece of metal right there. Whoa, okay. Moving on guys. I'm going to take a lot of mud out of this bucket rather than a tiny bit. Get out of there. Okay. Taking a lot of mud out of it because I don't want to mess around. It's late and we got to be getting Ah, oh, nothing worse than getting it in your eyeball. Or, <laughs> you're working fast and you sweat and it goes in your eye like it's in my eye. I'm like, reminds me of that fight with Cassius Clay. Then, Muhammad Ali now, he was fighting Sonny Liston and he had something in his eye. <laughs> That's what I got right now, but I'm going to finish this. I think it's just a sweat in my eye or it could be this because technically I'm wearing glasses guys am I wearing a mask no if I was mixing would I be wearing a mask 
Absolutely. Because when you mix up cement, guess what? It's got this thing called lime. And it's got another thing called silica. Silica is when you cut the sand. You cut through the sand. They put it in many of them. That silica dust goes in the lungs. And it doesn't come out. It just stays there. And it just turns the lungs black. It just beats them up, guys. So when you're mixing, wear a mask. When you're an applicator like me, you don't need a mask. Uh, but that, that brings up another subject. Never, ever, ever take stucco and cut it with a saw. You take a skill saw, you put a, a hilti blade on it. You can cut through stucco or concrete. But all that dust, if you inhale it, it's got silica in it. Picture tapioca pudding. That's what our lungs look like. And you get that, that silica dust in there because you're thinking, man, I'm going to grind down the stucco. I'm going to cut concrete. <laughs> what you're going to do is poison yourself, guys, because that silica dust is no joke. It gets on your lungs and then turns it black. That's for my buddy Mark Fowler. Mark Fowler is the editor of, uh, well, it used to be Walls and Ceilings, and now he's the editor of, what is that, SMA? Uh, and soon, this year, they're implementing new rules. Just what we need, more rules. But um, you're going to have to take tests for contracting, and you're going to have to learn all about silica dust. He sent me a video. He thought, Kirk, I know you like Gilligan's Island and cartoons, so I'm going to send it you the video. And it shows in the video, inhaling the dust. You ever watch those movies where it's a doctor movie and they show in slow motion what the stuff does when it goes down your throat? Well, his showed that the silica dust sticks to your lungs and then it just turns them black. And it, they really don't. He says, he says that once it turns black, that's it. You can't um, clean your lungs. Me personally, I believe the whole human body regenerates itself. That's just a belief of mine. From spines, you name it, I think that. Okay, so again, working here, almost got it done. What I think I'm gonna do, guys, is just finish this up right here because I only got a little bit of mud. And then uh, Mel's gonna bring me a little bit more mud and I'm gonna finish it. Now this is hot, so if it's hot, and if I leave this here and I keep going, keep going, it's gonna be a different texture than that. So I knock it down, guys. You don't have to look. Just lift, is it a lift. What you're doing is, when you come down, you lift the, the bottom up. When you go up, you lift the top up. That is how you do, uh, well, damn near everything as far as stucco. A little bit more. And I'm going to get down. I'm not going to show you the bottom because uh, you get the point. I do want to cover this J trim, so I'm going low. And here's what I do now, guys. Just keep on keeping on. And if you guys watch what we do and you say, I think I can do that, you probably could. Any sheet rockers watching, you can do this, guys, because you already got the skill. But here's, here's something. Okay, if you think... How is he making that skip? The wall is pulling it off. Say, for example, okay, I put a little bit on here. Now I'm going to let the wall pull it off. I put this here and come down. Now the wall is pulling it off. All I'm doing is lightly rubbing against, against what we have. So it's not, it's not like some people say, hey, I watch what you do, but I don't understand how you skip it. I don't skip it. The wall drags it off. So uh, the wall kind of drags it off, guys. Boom, like that. And again, I'm looking at what I'm doing because I need to knock it all down. That way when it dries, it's... Uh, I, I didn't want it like the other house we showed in the video. Now that's a nice texture, but I don't want to... If I was going to texture my own house, I don't want it to look like Taco Bell. Taco Bell, what they did is they just left the texture with a heavier sand and that was it. They didn't knock it down. And while we're on that, what is this? This is La Habra finish coat. And it's called 2030 mud. 
What is 2030 mud? That is the middle mud. Then you have like in the three bears, you have the heavy mud, the heavy sand, and that's called 1620. Or you have the super fine, that's 3030. Technical stuff, probably will never need. But anyway, you guys see where it's going. Uh, we are still in the corona epidemic. Every time I look, I see uh, everybody around. I think, wow, that's weird. But anyhow, guys, I'm going to sit down for a sec and tell you guys once more. If you love what you do, you never have to work another day in your life. We all love what, love what we do. So we're making money and getting strong, feeling good. Got to love it. What the country. Anyway, guys, we thank you for watching. And as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates. So if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.